Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Pen Habit. Got another great pen review for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Platinum 3776 Century in Chartres Bleu. Um, I think that's how that's pronounced. Uh, Platinum is a Japanese brand, fairly well-known Japanese brand. This is the first Platinum pen I have owned. Um, interesting pen. Uh, let, so let me take you through what comes with the package. So it comes, as is often the case, in this cardboard sleeve. Uh, comes with a nice blue pen coffin. So you open it up and this pen came with a lot of stuff in it. So um, we, we have a warranty card here, the instruction manual, a converter, and Platinum uses their own proprietary converter system, a cartridge in blue, pigment ink. Um, and I think there's a black one that isn't in here anymore as well. Uh, it comes with this little rubber stamp that says uh, written using platinum pigment ink. I have no idea why this is in here or how why I would even choose to use it, but there you go. And then there comes the pen. Now, this was attached to the clip, but uh, this is the pen right here. So it's a resin pen. The, the resin is slightly translucent. Uh, it's not slightly translucent. It's translucent. Um, so you can see through it. It's a very, very deep, rich, beautiful blue color, though. Um, so it, it's hard because it is so dark. It is hard to see through. But it is um, it is a translucent resin. Gold plated finishes here on the clip and the band. The band has made in Japan some Japanese characters, and then it says platinum made in Japan again. So there you go. Now the thirty seven seventy six. Uh, refers to, I believe, the height of uh, a mountain in Japan, maybe Mount Fuji, I don't know for sure. But it does refer to uh, much in the way that 4810 on a Mont Blanc refers to Mont Blanc. The 3776, I believe, refers to the height of a mountain in Japan. Uh, it is your pretty standard cigar-shaped pen, but it is a little smaller uh, than a lot of cigar-shaped pens. Many of the cigar-shaped pens tend to have... Um, tend to be larger than one would expect. They tend to be just a little bit on the, uh, the you know, compensating for something side uh, that I tend to like so much. Don't know what that says about me. But um, anyway, uh, so about this, a couple things about this pen. Um, list price on the pen is 220 US dollars. Retail in the U.S. at Goulet Pens, it sells for $176. But I actually bought this pen on eBay, and I bought it from a seller in Japan. And because I bought it directly in Japan, I paid $89 for it plus $13 shipping and handling. Comes with a 14-karat nib, so you're getting a 14-karat gold nib for $102, bucks, including shipping. Not too shabby. Um, it's a nice pen. It's a nice pen. It's not the, the nicest pen I've ever used, but it is a nice pen and certainly good for the good value for the money. The other thing that's kind of interesting about these platinum pens, they have what's called a slip and seal inner, inner cap system. It's a patented thing that they've come up with. But basically, it's an inner cap that when you close it, it seals a little bit more tightly. There's videos online you can see about, about this whole system, but it will prevent the pen from drying out. And so if you're the kind of person who uses a pen and then sets it aside for a long period of time, according to Platinum, you can go two years without your pen drying out because of this slip and seal inner cap system that they have patented. Um, so let's talk the stats on the pen. We are looking at 16 grams without the cap, and that is with the uh, converter, excuse me, in place, inked up, and 24 grams with the cap on or posted. It is 10.4 millimeters in the middle of the section here. So, and it is, it's a nice, comfortable hold. You can see here, it uh, it fits nicely in the hand. It is just a touch smaller than I generally like. Um, I like my pens to be just a little bit longer, but we'll talk about that. Can be posted. Um, the barrel is 13.3 millimeters at its widest point, And the cap right around here is about 14.7 millimeters. So it is 
119 millimeters uncapped, which as I mentioned is short uh, for uncapped writing. This is on the verge of what I can use uncapped or unposted. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a little on the small side for what I generally prefer. The pen is 138 millimeters when it is capped and as I mentioned, can be posted and posts at 153 millimeters. So in terms of may or in terms of the build quality, it looks really nice. The, the resin is beautiful color. It's polished perfectly, very well fit. Clip is nice and uh, it's got a little bit of spring to it, but it's still very stiff. Um, the, the threads are nice and smooth. You get you can feel the tension of when that right about here, it, and then you've got another quarter of a turn there where you can feel that slip and seal cap uh, come on. So the band there, a nice big gold band in the center, and a little band down here at the end of the barrel. So, you know, like I said, it's a beautiful material, kind of a boring design, but a lot of the Japanese pens tend to go very much on that understated route. They don't do a lot of super flashy materials until you get into the really expensive maki or however it's pronounced, maki maki -e, I think it is, maki -e, um, you know, hand design sort of stuff. So most of their everyday use pens are a, a, a bit more understated, more traditional designs, that sort of thing. Um, let's, uh, let me talk to you a little bit about the nib though. So as I mentioned, it's a 14 karat gold nib. One of the things I found kind of interesting is the nib is really flat. Um, usually the nibs have a little bit more curve to them. So it's not your traditional shape of like a number six style nib. Um, it's, it's interesting. I think it's attractive, although nothing particularly special about it. It says 3776, has a P, 14K, M, 585. So 14 karat medium nib and 585 is the... Um, is the 58.5% uh, gold, which is the, the hallmark for 14 karat gold, hallmark. That was the word I was looking for. Uh, has a heart-shaped nib hole in it, a breather, breather hole. And as a Japanese nib, it runs quite fine for a medium. This is one of the finest mediums I've ever used. Uh, it uh, And so, if you're used to European styles, as I am, as I because I generally tend to prefer the the slightly flashier materials and unique designs of Italian pens and you know that sort of thing, then you might uh, you might find this to be a little bit small for what you're expecting. But if you like the 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 finer lines, uh, and I know a lot of people do, I'm not one of them, but I know a lot of people do. Then this this is a just know that when you're going in. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, I think I've talked about this long enough. Let's go ahead. I'm going to dive in, do some writing, show you how it writes, and talk about that, and we'll wrap up. So here we go. All right, this is the Platinum. Have to, you'll have to excuse Luke the dog over there. He's just down here barking at some sound that isn't actually there. You know, that's, He's a dog. That's what he does. Luke, go lay down, please. All right. Platinum 3776 Century. And this is a 14 karat gold nib in medium. And as I mentioned, that is a Japanese medium. The ink for today is Mont Blanc. Leo, as in Leonardo da Vinci. Red chalk. Love this ink. One of my favorites. And of course, because it is one of my favorites, it's a limited edition and will probably go away sometime in the not too distant future. And the paper is a Rhodia dot pad. So here is our quote.
All right. So the pen, right out of the box, I had no problems with uh, hard starts, skipping, anything like that. It is, it's not super wet. It, it, it's got a little bit of wetness to it, but not a terrible amount. Now, part of that is probably because it's got a finer nib point to it than I'm used to for most of my pens, which are, are European style mediums, but it, uh, it writes, it writes nicely. Now, it was just a touch scratchy. One of the uh, tines was just the slightest tiny bit out of alignment. And so I did a, a, a tiny realignment and a bit of smoothing. Normally, I wait until after the review to do that. But um, it, I, and I could have because it wasn't unusable by any stretch of the imagination. It was just giving me a, a tiny bit more tooth in my writing than I generally like. It's still not as super you know, smooth as I like, but it is pretty darn good. And, you know, I'll, I'll take some time to do a little bit more um, tinkering around with it just to make sure that it writes the way I like it to. Now, let's talk line variation. When I first started playing around with this, I was like, wow, this has actually got some pretty decent line variation, but you have to push pretty hard to get it. Um, I would not, um, I would not recommend buying this pen for the line variation, but it does give you a nice tiny little bit of bounce. That was me not putting the pen on the paper, not skipping or railroading. Um, but yeah, it writes very, very well, uh, especially now that I've just smoothed it out a tiny little bit. Um, in terms of the reverse writing, we have some nice reverse writing and it writes pretty nicely. So I'd say one size smaller, so this is probably like a Japanese fine. Um, And uh, yeah, it's it's actually a, a decent writer, upside down, good flow, everything. You know, I have to say, I've had people, I think Platinum is a pretty well-respected brand, but based on my experience with this pen, I'm surprised more people don't talk about it more because it's a nice pen. And and to be fair, I've had nicer experiences with this pen than I have with the most of the, the Pilot pens that I've used in the past. Now, granted, I haven't used a lot of them, um, this pen also, as I mentioned, is a, well, actually, I don't know if I did mention it. It is a cartridge and converter pen. Um, it comes with its own converter, and the converter is very high quality, but it is proprietary, which, as we all know, I'm not a big fan of, but it works. It works. It's not It's not a big pain in the, pain in the rear end or anything like that. So for the most part, uh, you know, I, I like this pen. I use it quite a bit. It's it's a good you know some people will say hundred dollars for a pen is is not a workaday pen that's a that's a fancy pen and and if that's your budget absolutely and this is this would be a good value for a hundred dollars I think for one hundred seventy six dollars or two hundred twenty dollars the retail price price or list price in the United States I probably wouldn't buy this but for eighty nine bucks plus shipping this was a good value I think um, so I would say if you if you're in the U S in particular and you want to get one of these pens. Go to eBay, find one of the Japanese sellers uh, who has a really high rating, and order from them. And uh, I think you will be uh, you'll be pretty pleased with this pen. Um, so that's that's about it for the Platinum Thirty Seven Seventy Six Century. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will do my best to answer, and we'll see you here next time on the Pen Habit. Have a good one.